Welcome, folks. Another episode of the SEK Show brought to you by Mac Coffee. Power your now. Before we start, a big shout out to Wet Lounge at Bollywood Casino, our co-sponsors. And today we talk about bikinis, not in the way you are thinking. We're talking about fitness. Let's speak to Farah Ismail. Welcome, Far Ismail. Nice to have you on the show. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for your time. Really nice of you to come over. I'll tell us, you know, there's a question I ask everyone the first time. Far Ismail, now who is Far Ismail in a nutshell? Uh, Far Ismail is a bikini athlete. Far Ismail is a lawyer. I'm also a USN sponsored wow, athlete. A lawyer and yes. a bikini athlete. Yes. Amazing, amazing. And a sponsored USN. Sponsored USN. I'm also sponsored by AlphaFit, which is a local gym in town as well. Okay, okay. So tell me now. We'll we'll, we'll take it slow here, you know, step okay. step by step. So yes. As a child, how how were you as a child? Very hyper. Yeah, my nickname was Ferrari. They just couldn't hold me down. <laughs> I was like running around everywhere. I like so I think I've always had lots of energy. Okay, and uh, while growing up and everything, were you exposed uh, to the fitness lifestyle? Yeah, you know, my, um, I think it starts at home. My, my dad was really into fitness and, mm -hmm. you know, he'd be running up and down hills. And then I went to school here in, at Hillcrest and every day at three o'clock we'd stop our classes and we'd go play whatever the sport was. And at the time I really didn't want to run some days, but, mm -hmm. you know, they forced you to. And it really built it into, I guess, my system. So I've always had kind of a balance of using the brain, working part of the brain and yeah. then stopping yeah. and switching to yeah. using, you know, my body and, mm. and being into fitness. So it's like beauty and brains together. We with try. The huh? We try. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me now, uh, you know, when it comes to like, uh, were you genetically uh, as fit as you are now or were you big when you were young? Well, you no, have at a certain stage. Well, it's interesting because you do have to work with your genetics when you yes. bodybuild, as you yes. know. But that's the beauty of bodybuilding. I wouldn't say I was big. I've always been into athletics. I used to play field hockey. I actually played for Hillcrest and went to Zimbabwe um, for the team. I used to run cross country, so I ran Green Acres and I came third, which was, you know, wow. against wow. local Kenyan runners. Okay. So that's okay. great. Um, I've played a lot of squash, so I've always been into athletics, but you know, it's a, it has a different impact on your body. I've run five marathons as mm -hmm. well, so I was into So you are a heavy running. runner? I'm a heavy runner and now a heavy bodybuilder so, so, lifter. Okay, so how did it all start? Tell, tell us the, yeah, the bodybuilding. The whole yeah. um, the bodybuilding. No, did it start with running first and then came bodybuilding? or? It's kind of, I think I like challenges. I'm okay. a person that likes, I start something and I want to do better in it. So with running, I just had a goal of doing one marathon. And then I ran my first one. I'm like, oh, no, no, I want to do better. And mm -hmm. then I started trying to qualify for Boston. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, when I came back to Kenya in 2012, my goal was to run Lewa. So I ran Lewa Marathon, which is a very difficult yeah. marathon to run. Yeah. Uh, so that was kind of, you know, it's always been something that I, I try and do better. Yeah. And then yeah. bodybuilding is something that I was exposed to when I was living in the States. Yeah. And uh, I'd gone how, to a competition. How, how long ago was this? So I'm thinking maybe, I think, I'm trying to think of when it is. So I was living in um, the Baltimore, Washington area, and I used to go to Florida a lot. Yeah. And I'd gone there, I was going there one, one year with a friend of mine because her brother lived there. So her brother was dating a bodybuilder, which I didn't know. So we Ooh. get to Florida, and uh, this was um, in Fort Lauderdale area. And he's like, tonight, we're going to go Ten see my ago? girlfriend. This was probably 2010, yeah, about, 2010, yeah, about yeah? 2010 about. or so. I'm trying okay. to, I don't know the exact date. I can't Almost. remember now. Okay, yeah. But anyway, so I, I, we go to this event, yeah. and that was the first time I've seen women on stage. I mean, we all know about Arnold, yes, and I've yes. seen the male bodybuilders. But the I've legends actually, are I've seen the legends, yeah. and I know of them, but yeah. I've never actually watched women on stage. Okay. And it was just amazing to see these strong, confident women with these muscles, and you could see every edge of a muscle, mm -hmm. and it was just mm -hmm. beautiful to me. So that was kind of something that stuck in my head. I didn't think I wanted to do it, but it was kind of like, wow. Okay. There was the wow yeah. effect. Yeah, it and got then, to you a bit. Yeah, and then forward 2014, um, I'd now been back in Kenya for two years. Of course, it would be easier if I wanted to bodybuild when I lived in the States, but no, I wanted to do it the difficult yeah, way the, because the I like challenges. And everything, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't really have a coach here. I didn't know where to go. Um, I'd met a woman on the plane around the same time when I lived in the States who, yeah. 
she looked phenomenal for her age and I, and I looked at her and she was taking down her food from up in the in the in the at the top there and I'm like what are you doing she's like I bodybuild I have a very clean diet I have to eat a specific way there's no way I'm eating yeah. the plain food and yeah. that was the first I'd heard of it I mean everyone yeah. eats the food on the plane so she had told me when I sat with her on the plane um, she had a coach in Ohio um, his name was Mike Davies so that's where my journey started so in 2014 in the summer I went back to Ohio. I found this guy. I Whoa. stayed for the weekend at his house. He has his retreats with him and his wife where mm. you go there, they train you what to eat, they look at your body and say, okay, you are for the bikini athlete um, category. So, you know, women's bodybuilding, like men's bodybuilding, has many categories. Now I've gone completely off the question you Whoa. asked me. No, but no, it's cool. Go for it. Go for it. I'm loving it. So women's Today I'm on a break, guys. <laughs> She's in control. Go for it. I like it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, women's bodybuilding, as you heard, I know you've had some other women on the show but yeah. you go all the way to the bodybuilders and then you go into really um, the fitness which are more um, gymnastics aerobics then there's physique which is um, less muscular but you still have a routine yeah. um, and then you go into figure so figure is something where again it's it's less muscle it's a bit more feminine mm. there is now a new category called wellness in, in uh, women's bodybuilding which is um, basically less less muscle then so it's really a scale you can see you're coming down in muscle so wellness but you have big legs so you know again you talked about genetics women have different genetics you can't all fit into the yes, same you've got to true. find the right category true. and the lowest um, muscle category which is one I'm in is bikini fitness mm -hmm. so and there's always a debate of you know I genetically have big legs so yeah. do I stay in bikini or do I move into wellness into this new category so um, this is kind of where it all started. So I went there, he said, you're bikini, this is your diet, this is your workout. And I did my first show that year at the Muscle Mania Africa here in Nairobi. Whoa. Yeah. And that was the beginning. And then as I said, I like challenges. That wasn't the end, that was the start. That was the start. I wanted to do better and better and better. And so I've now been competing since 2014. So tell us some of your amazing achievements. Uh, amazing achievement is actually get on stage in a bikini, which was horrifying for me yeah. the first time. Yeah. Um, of course you have to break a lot of barriers to do so um, but it's really you know there's you see where you want to go it's been a great motivator so each time I did better my mm -hmm. first competition at the Muscle Mania Africa I came first in fitness and second in wow. bikini and there were really only four of us here you know wow. she thought I think you've yes, spoken to her yes. before was first and she was kind of first in bikini at the time she was doing bikini yeah. um, the next year I went on to do Miss Nairobi so around the same time I think I was fortunate that the Kenya Bodybuilding Federation um, started really supporting women in the sport. So the sport had kind of died. I think it was very big in mm -hmm. the early um, 2000s. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of corruption, a lot of issues in the sport, and it kind of died. So the new KBBF board started trying to uh, re re relive the Rebuild sport and, board, yeah. and build okay. it up again. Mm -hmm. So in that way I was quite lucky. So there were some local competitions. So there was the Miss Kenya um, in 2015. Uh, and then there was the, the Miss Nairobi, Miss Kenya. There was a modern fitness competition in Mombasa as well. So I won all three of them. In 2016, in 2015, I also did my first international competition in Dubai. Wow. Wow. I didn't know it was going to be a world championship. I mean, yeah. I was looking for an international yeah. ground yeah. to take and, and challenge myself. Um, I didn't place in that competition. It was the first one and I got to see just how big and different it is out there. It was overwhelming when I went to register, the, you know, the elevators opened and there were like these masses of people Whoa. and I was like, oh my God, what have I just done? Um, and everything that could have gone wrong went wrong in that competition from a, from a preparation and being there. And there's lots of elements for you to get on the stage, yeah. for instance. So, you know, you have to get tanned, your hair, your makeup, all of my services were a mess. Everyone came late I and mean, the show was running late. I just, you know, and I'm trying to control all of this because it's my first show. So anyway, that one wasn't that great. But since then, um, in 2016, I won my first international competition in Dubai. It was the muscle fitness competition. So mm. I came first in, in my age group. And um, so that was my first international win. I also won the Miss Kenya that wow. year. And then so in, you have quite a lot under your belt. Yes, and in 2016, I also competed in the first Arnold Africa in uh, South Africa. Um, I didn't place that year. I came seventh. Yeah. Um, but again, it was my, my first large international yeah, competition, yeah, yeah. where this time now I kind of sort of knew what I was doing. Um, but then, you know, we can talk about all the things that could go wrong. I mean, this time, 
I was getting my makeup done off site and they were delayed and I almost yeah. missed getting on stage. So I was backstage and I'm getting dressed and I hear someone coming and saying, Miss Kenya, Miss Kenya, you're oh. on stage. Um, so the greatest thing there was I put the name of Kenya on the map yeah, that we have yeah, bodybuilders yeah, yeah. Um, because they knew there was a Miss Kenya in the yeah, house and they yes, came looking yes, for her. Uh -huh. And then in 2017, so last year, I improved my performance at the Arnold and I came sixth. So I brought back two medals for Kenya. I came sixth Brilliant. in my age group and in the Brilliant. open category. Brilliant. So I competed with women half my age and I did really well. And then, uh, so that was really exciting because it was the only two medals we brought yeah. back for Kenya. And um, and then uh, I also won the Miss Kenya again last year, so wow. I'm a three-time holder of the title. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, very excited to be so. Yeah. And uh, so this year I am planning to go to the Arnold again and see hopefully if I can do better. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping to compete in some more international competitions. Well, I'm we're sure see. you'll definitely do well for that. <laughs> yes. Guys, we meet uh, right after this. My name is Zablon. I'm three-time Miss Kenya. Fitness freak and a personal trainer. Mac Coffee Morning gives me the perfect start every morning. It is very fast and easy to make it. I just have to open the sachet, pour it in the cup and add hot water. You don't need sugar or milk or anything else. It is fast, convenient and tasty. And above all, it gives me energy for the whole day. And what's a better way to start my morning? I love Mac Coffee Morning. Mac Coffee, power, your now. So far, tell me now, you know, I mean, you, your goals are amazing, you know. It's like your goal just keeps popping up as you move on, I guess, you know, and uh, very inspiring you are. I know a lot of people at the gym and a couple of other places, they're like, hey, have you checked far out, man? <laughs> She's got a body, man, and have you seen her workout, you know? And uh, you have a gym face on all the time, and yes. you don't even talk to people at the gym. No. They're like, hey, zone out. I'm in my own zone right now. And, and, that, and that's amazing. Now, tell me, when, you, when you're working out, as a, as a lady now, you're working out, uh, let's say you do normal fitness, and then you're actually competing. Are there different preps for that, or is it just the same stuff? Yeah, there's different preps. Um, you know, there's, and fitness is, and you've heard this, you've talked to many people, that, you know, you pick what you want to do yes. that will get you there to the gym and that will keep your cardio up. Bodybuilding, and I say this from for women as we age, we start losing muscle mass and mm -hmm. for men too, but for mm -hmm. women especially. So out of everything I've done, mm -hmm. I found that weights, I've been able to change my body. Okay. Um, it really does. I mean, you broaden your shoulders, you narrow your waist, you change how your glutes look. Everyone yeah. talks about yeah. the booty. It's yeah. big in fashion. Yeah. Uh, so then it's about goals. So for me, the goal is, and I always tell people when I motivate them, is you got to look at where you want to go. So I always say, get that picture of what you want to look like, and that's your target. Yeah. It's all about muscle mind and, and, and just keeping your mind on what you're improving and what yeah. you're working out on. So yeah. a lot of people will go to the gym and you know they'll be on their phone, they'll be watching exactly. TV. Yeah. You're not paying attention to the muscle. Yeah. So the first thing is it depends on your goal. My goal is to be on stage. I'm judged basically on symmetry, how my muscles look. Is the left side the same as the right oh. side? Oh. Is it balanced? Is there the V taper? It's really the X shape they look for on the stage. Um, the bikini category is almost anorexic on stage and that's why a lot of people are moving into the wellness yeah, yeah, category yeah. because with bikini it's streamlined like I saw I spent all this time building my legs and then I got to lose them for competition so but there's there's and it's changing so what what I need to take to stage sometimes differs and it's different in Europe what the winning formula is from mm -hmm. what it is in South Africa Whoa. to what it is in Brazil. We know there's a mm -hmm. bigger booty in Brazil. Whoa. So depending on where you're competing, you have to think about what the judges there are going to look like. The Europeans are, are very, very So you skinny. train as per the competition. And so you train a bit place. as per the competition, but generally you know the guidelines for bikini. It's very streamlined. It's all about the shoulders, the yeah. narrow waist, yeah. the booty. Yeah. Um, so that's my my focus. But if you're going to, if you're going in there and you're a woman saying, I want to build my glutes, then you kind of focus on that. Now the training for competing, yeah, it's different. It's, it's a, a, tw it's a 12 board. week program in essence, but you could mm -hmm. be more. Some people train for 20 weeks mm -hmm. and you're training more towards your weaknesses. So for instance, right now I do legs and glutes three times a week because I'm really trying to build them. Even though I have big legs, I'm, yeah. th those are the areas. Bikini, yeah. if you want to win, it's all about the glutes. Yeah. 
Um, shoulders, I spend a lot of time on shoulders because I'm trying to build them up. That's an area that I'm really trying to work on. So I will work with um, looking at my weaknesses because I know what I want to get on stage. Yeah. Regular people who are not competing will want a balanced workout. Sometimes just full body workouts are great. Yeah. Uh, so it depends on the goal of where you're going. In the end, if it's a woman going to the gym, it's just to get more muscle, tone, mass, the fitness level and all of those things. They're not looking to be a certain shape for yeah, stage. Yeah. They're looking for a everyday look kind of thing, if, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So far, tell me, being an Asian, you know, and then uh, becoming a bikini athlete, were there any hindrance or something? Was your family very uh, comfortable with all that, all your relatives and all? I always get that question. Yeah. So it's my, sad. It is. But there, there are a lot of old school people in well, this. Well, it's not just Asian. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's um, the Kenyans as well. So yeah. that's what's been a hindrance here in yeah. the sport. Um, well, I think it's personality, really. I actually don't really care what people think, and I kind of <laughs> do what I want. So coming to diet, yeah. you say eighty percent is diet. What's your take on that? Yeah, it's true. Uh, but you know everyone's body is different so what works for me may not work for you you have to experiment I can't say I still completely know my body yeah. and it also changes with hormones and age yeah. and everything no, else no, I mean based on you your personal experiences yeah. which has been your favorite diet and I mean I use keto you, a lot keto, which is okay. basically uh, I eliminate when I'm uh, when I'm training all carbs all sugars um, all dairy and I'm basically working on proteins and vegetables and I even have, USN even has um, a protein powder that has zero carbs and zero sugar. This, okay. That's a new protein powder that's coming to the market here in June. Mm -hmm. But I got it from South Africa because, again, I couldn't have protein powder because all of it has sugar and carbs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for me, that helps me lean. It flattens the muscles, though. So what happens is then closer to competition, I add in some more carbs to, yeah. to get the... So you the, do check out each and every micros of yours? Um, I don't go by macros because yeah. I, I don't want to be stuck on counting stuff. I mean, yeah. I have a diet that I have from my coach um, mm -hmm. in the UK and, you know, I've been kind of with the same coach for about three years now. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of, I work on weight and I, by now I know the portion. So if I go to a restaurant or I, you know, my biggest cheat meal is breakfast because I know two eggs are two yeah. eggs. So I can go yeah. and have brunch and I know mm -hmm. I'm getting two mm -hmm. eggs. Um, but I will, I'll kind of know what 100 grams of protein is or, you know, how much vegetables yeah, I should be yeah, having. Yeah. So by now I kind of have a sense. I don't weigh it because I think that's yeah. a bit crazy. <laughs> um, bodybuilders get crazy yeah. and it's true. I already um, weigh all my food out and I get the package. So I have mm -hmm. somebody that I've, I've, um, I pay to kind of put together my portions and weigh everything and give me the diet. So I could just, every day I leave for work and yeah. I take my Tupperware and I go with my five meals and I come home and... That's how I manage, but I don't sit there and, and go by macros, really. Okay, so you do prep, uh, a proper meal prep for yourself? Oh, yeah. I, I don't um, train people directly, per se. I don't have so standing clients. So you're not clients. a personal trainer I'm not such. a personal trainer. Yeah. I'm actually, uh, but I, I do... I'm sure you get a lot of people saying, you know what, Far, trade me, man, I'll give you the bugs, this, that, that, this. I do, I do. And, you know, I, I help out where I can and give yeah. tips where I can. It's just because for me, I have, I'm balancing my day job with my fitness. I don't have free hours right now. But yeah. hoping maybe there's a stage that I will. There's a stage you will, yes. yeah. People say women look very bad with muscles. What's your take on that? Uh, a lady with a muscle uh, looks like a man and this and that. Well, comments, I, people pass in there, silly comments here and there. Well, you know, I think, uh, well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Um, I feel stronger, I feel more confident, mm. um, I don't need everyone to like me. This is my lifestyle I've chosen. But, but has, me, there, has there been an experience like that with you? Somebody's come and told you, oh man, you look like a guy or something. Nobody's actually told me that. Mm. Um, you know, maybe, I'm, maybe I intimidate guys yeah. or I intimidate yeah. people and I don't know it and they don't <laughs> say it, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I just feel for me it gives me an extra confidence and, and a lot of women have said that so mm. actually I would think the opposite I think I would come off as more confident awesome. um, you know in my day job I, yeah. I work in a very male environment <laughs> and um, you know I I actually find that it, it's not that yeah. I, I need the extra shred of confidence or anything, but I feel that, you know, it gives me a bit more credo for what I do in awesome. a way. It's, yeah. it's, I just love your positive vibes. Right? <laughs> that's, that's excellent. Now, last but not least, day job, lawyer. Yeah. How, how's the balance? How do you get the balance in between? Oh, that? gosh. Well, 
it, it's tough because um, you know, and it depends on. And I, I'm not operating in a very easy space. I, I do HR and legal, wow. and uh, I work across African countries. So I have a very difficult day job at the moment, and it's quite stressful. And we know yeah. that has impacts on the body, like cortisol and stress. So I have to kind of dissipate that as well. Yeah. Um, but it works well because, you know, in the day I completely exhaust my brain. Like when I get to 6.30, I can't solve another problem. Like don't ask me to solve another one for you. And then I basically switch into my, my gym mind. I literally have to kind of transition. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it might be like five minutes on the treadmill to now switch into, okay, focus on the, yeah. the muscle yeah. now. Take yeah. away from the brain and, and the muscle I'm working on that day. Um, it helps me kind of, so the, the day job, helps me kind of use my brain and stay focused and, and all of that. And then the night, the gym really helps me kind of dissipate that. And that's wow. how it works. Awesome, man. And it pays for me. Awesome. That was the other thing awesome. we talked about. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. You don't only inspire women, you also inspire men. Oh, that's good that, to know. That, well, that's super <laughs> now. But you know, a lot of women out, out there who want to get into your shape, advice, what would you give them? I'd say just do it. Um, you know, you need to find somebody that you look up to or that picture that I talked to you about. Uh, there's lots of stuff on the internet. You can contact me if you want. Yeah. Uh, my Check her out on Instagram. Yeah, She's very active. Far.ismile if you want to She doesn't smile me. much though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a serious lawyer. Yeah. Hey, I'm very serious in the gym. So just, uh, I, I would say, look, if your heart's in it, just do it. Go through all the challenges. It's yeah. not easy, but if you want to be there on stage and be representing Kenya internationally, just do it. Just do it. So far, tell me your inspiration. Who is your inspiration? Is My inspiration. Everyone has an inspiration. So mm -hmm. I look up to certain fitness athletes. Uh, Michelle Lewin was my very first Ooh. inspiration. Uh, she is Venezuelan. She lives in uh, Miami. And uh, I met her when I went to Florida as well. Wow. So I got a chance to kind of shake her hand and uh -huh. I got a chance to, she was doing a photo shoot for La Bella Mafia, which is okay. one of these international um, fitness wear brands. Yeah. And so I was so excited and they said, oh, come along on the shoot. So I got to be, you know, the lady that holds the reflector <laughs> yeah. for the afternoon yeah. in the Miami <laughs> sun. And I did that all afternoon. I got yeah. to watch her yeah. and just yeah. take her in and just yeah. look at her amazing body. Yeah. And, and yeah. so she was my early inspiration. Yeah. There's many other fitness athletes now that um, you know I look up to she was very good and instrumental because um, had a great like Instagram account that I could follow wow. and since then there's many others that you know Anita Herbert is another one that I, I love her body so like everyone I also have people that I look up oh, to and awesome. say that's the body I that's want to be. That's great meet. that's great man so thank you for your time just uh, oh. a small gift from our sponsor Mac coffee. coffee. Some uh, coffee for you. Every I'm sure bodybuilder's you'll the dream. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Thank I actually have something for you. Oh, really? Yes. Well, that's nice. That's the first time somebody's giving me something. So, sure. since I'm a USN athlete, yeah. I brought you some goodies from USN. Oh, wow. But I also brought you a band which I use, which you can maybe use, and I'll help you use it really? sometime. Okay, yes. I think we need to do a tutorial. Thanks so much for this. You know, You're Thanks welcome. to you and USN, for Santa Sana. Uh, I need to learn how to use that band, by the way. We'll do another we'll session We'll do a tutorial for, for that, sure. guys. Keep watching, like, share, subscribe.